Okay, this next question is quite difficult, um, but there are many ways of going about this, and this is one where I think I've got a strategy that is is pretty neat for the just for this particular paper. Um, and you might think it's a bit of a cheat. You might think it's great, but you know we'll we'll have a look and uh, and you can decide. So it says let a and b be positive real numbers. If x squared plus one is less than or equal to one, then the largest then we want to know what is the largest that ax plus by can be equal to. So um, let's start by just thinking about this problem a little bit. Uh, and uh, if we have uh, x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. Well, x squared plus y squared equals 1 is the unit circle. Okay, so x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1 is the interior of this circle. It's, it's inside and including the, the, the line that defines it. Now, it says, what's the largest that ax plus by can be equal to? Now, here's where I'm going to introduce a slight cheat for this paper, right? which is that I've got five options here, and... Um, I just want to make this question easy. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and get a little bit lucky. Okay, so if this uh, if this uh, question has a solution for any value of a and b, in particular, one thing I could do is just choose a particular value of a and b that makes the question easier, and the answer must hold for that one. And if I end up with just one of these being a possibility, then I can deduce not really mathematically, but because this is a paper that's been set with a correct answer, that it must also be the, 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 the value for all positive real numbers. So it's not really, you know, it wouldn't be a valid argument like as a full mathematical proof in a written answer to this question. But let's just try um, uh, taking some of the easiest positive real numbers I can think of. So let's make a equal one and b equal one. Okay. Um, now, uh, also, you know, by doing that, it might just help me think about the question. So if I need to go back to A and B in a second, you know, I may just have a way in. So what? So, so we're now, this reduces to what's the largest that just X plus Y can be, right? So let's think about what lines X plus Y equals constant look like, right? Uh, well, that's the same as, you know, Y equals a constant minus X. So essentially, these are lines uh, that have gradient minus 1. Um, you know, and they go through the same point on the y-axis as they do on the on the x-axis, like this, right? So that if this was like uh, this is like 1.5 or something, you know, this would be x plus y uh, x plus y equals 1.5. I'd have another one higher x, x plus x plus y equals 3. X plus y equals 5. We get actually, and this is a bit like having contour lines. You know, when you have a a map that shows you different heights of uh, of, of where you are all around the same line. This is like what we'd call a contour for x plus y. It's saying along these lines x plus y is constant and as I go in this direction, so essentially as I go in this direction you know, x plus y is increasing. Okay. And by thinking about that we can say well I can see actually which of these lines is going to be best. It's going to be the one here, the last one that just touches the circle. Okay, so um, so I'm going to rub out uh, all of my other lines here, and now we've thought about it, and just keep this one, uh, keep this one in here like this. Okay. So, so this one is going to be the the best choice um, because x plus y is increasing as we go in this direction. And now, because I've chosen these nice values, uh, where you know this, whatever this constant here is, is the same as the constant here. That's my value of x plus y, and um, this is the unit circle, so that has radius 1. Um, because of the symmetry here I can see that this uh, bisects this angle here so I've got just an angle of uh, 45, uh, 45 degrees so this is an isosceles triangle uh, so just from here to here is is 1 and then 1 uh, by Pythagoras because this is a right angle triangle 1 plus 1 is 2 and I take the square root so I get that C is the square root of 2. So the largest, so in the case where A and B are both 1 the largest value that this thing can take is the square root of 2. Uh, now, um, so, but we haven't answered the question because all the answers have a and b, right? But look, a and b are both 1 in this example, so 1 plus 1 is 2, the maximum of 1 and 1 is 1, this is the square root of 1 plus 1, that's the square root of 2, uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, and this is 1 plus 1 plus 1, which is 3, so, uh, so this is the only one that works. Right, so if this answer is going to have a 
you know, if this question is going to have a, a solution for any value of a and b, it must work for this particularly easy one that I've chosen, so I can deduce, uh, so long as this question has been well posed, that the answer is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Right, now, a bit luck I said if, I said we had to get a little bit lucky, because look, I had, did end up with two answers here that were both two, so if my conclusion was two, I'd still have to choose between these two, and then think about, in general, which of those is likely to be the, the best formula there. Um, but you know, this is a, a a reasonable strategy here, I think, for for this um, paper. Um, now, uh, you know, there are also many other ways of doing it. So, uh, so actually, I'm going to have a look at another way of doing this question. You can skip ahead if you want to. Um, actually, the mark scheme has a reasonably simple way of doing it, which I, you know I, I was not the way that I went about it, um, and is not this way either. So, it's also. Uh, you know, can show you that I am actually working through these problems. I'm not just uh, reading the answers from the mark scheme. I have my own ways of of doing these. Um, so here's one one way. The, the alter an alternative way here would be to say, uh, you know, if I wanted to do this in general, uh, okay, I need to have uh, this line here. Um, I, I need I need to have this line, which is now in general, uh, you know, a x plus b y equals c, being a tangent to the circle, so it's got to be a tangent to x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, so that means that when I solve these two simultaneously I get just one uh, single intersect, one single intersection point, one root. So this would be, that would be another approach here, I could rearrange this equation and get y equals c minus ax divided by b and substitute it in here. That would give me a x squared plus c minus ax over b squared uh, equals 1 um, and actually I solved this problem earlier as I've already solved it once I'm just going to do some of the uh, the, the rearrangement uh, here I think there's a bit of there's a little bit of messy algebra here but you know you can you can rearrange this uh, e equation and you get a quadratic that um, uh, a squared plus b squared times x squared minus 2 a c x plus c squared minus b squared equals zero. And if this is just going to have one root, one, one point here, then the discriminant of this quadratic has to be zero. So I take b squared minus ac in the quadratic formula sense, not in this b, uh, a and c. So b squared here is minus 2ac squared minus 4 times a squared plus b squared times c, which is uh, minus b squared. Um, and uh, uh, and, and see what we get here. So if we, so this is four a squared c squared uh, plus four a squared b squared, and then um, then we have uh, plus four b to the four. That would have to be equal to zero for the discriminant to be equal to zero. So we can divide it all through by four and uh, make c squared, the subject here, oh sorry I realise I've made a big mistake here, the, this, this is not minus b squared, it's c squared minus b squared, uh, okay so I'm just gonna, uh, I need to multiply this bit out again, uh, perhaps let me just uh, skip ahead and, and say so that we can um, uh, go on to the last question here that you know you, you essentially multiply all this out and, and rearrange it and make c squared the subject and you, and you see that you get you would get c squared equals uh, a squared plus b squared so c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared and so, and so that, kind of, that kind of works in general this is a way that you could you know, if you if this is a long answer question and you wanted to, to prove that this always works um, then you know uh, then we've done it as well um, just in case you thought my first way was cheating uh, and uh, actually if you look at the the um, the mark scheme for this paper that you can find online. There's a, a third way of approaching this as well. Um, okay, so are we going to do the last question though? Uh, so the hardest of the short answer questions. Um, it's quite a long video. Uh, so let n greater than 1 be an integer and then let capital pi of n denote the number of distinct prime factors of n and let x n denote the final digit of n. Uh, so pi of 8 is 1, pi of 6 is 2 and it says you know which of these statements uh, is, is false, so I suppose we should start by just actually checking that we understand that this is correct, so pi of 8 is 1, so pi of n is the, this number of distinct prime factors of n, so in the example 
you know, 8 is just 2 times 2 times 2, so 2 cubed, so it's only got one prime factor, uh, whereas pi of 6 is 2, because 6 is 2 times 3, it's got two distinct prime factors. And, and then we've got some quite complicated statements to unwrap here. If pi of n is 1, there are some values of x of n that mean x, x, that n cannot be prime, uh, or there are some values that mean n must be prime. If it's 1, there are values of xn which are impossible. If pi n plus xn, uh, which is the final digit of, of the number here, is 2, uh, we cannot tell if n is prime. If pi of n is 2, all values of x of n are possible. Right, so we just have to find one of these that's definitely false. Okay, so three of these statements involve pi of n being equal to 1, so I think that's a sensible place to start. Uh, so what does that mean? That means that means a number that's got just one prime factor, like, like 8 here, so you know, 2 cubed or 3 to the power of 7, whatever, it's only got one prime factor but possibly repeated. Um, so it's basically saying, you know, what, what would also knowing x of n, which is the last digit, uh, mean here? Okay, so let's take uh, some some different cases. So firstly, uh, perhaps the simplest case here is if we take the last digit to be two. Um, well, uh, you know, I can start just trying to think of some examples. So the number two itself is prime, so it could be prime, but obviously, you know, if I took a larger even number, um, that uh, but it's got to have pi of n equals one, so it's got to be a still got to be just a power of, uh, well it will have to be 2 here, so like 32, which is 2 to the power of uh, 5, that's not prime. Okay, so in this case we can get prime uh, or, or not prime. Uh, when xn equals like 4, 6, or 8, um, again there's actually, you know, there's, you know, we could definitely get some non-prime numbers here that are just, uh, say, uh, like a power of Two, like sixty-four here or something, um, and you can uh, do that for for, for others uh, as well. So we could have like sixteen and one hundred and twenty-eight. So these are all not prime, uh, but there's no way of of, of making a, something that ends in uh, four, six, or eight be prime. Right. Uh, so actually, uh, we know that statement A now is true. Okay, so that's not the answer to the question. Um, we want to know the one that's false, so we can exclude that one because uh, if we know the number has just one prime factor and we knew that the last digit was 4, 6 or 8, then it can't be prime. So there are some values for which that's the case. Um, now, uh, what about uh, some, some other possibilities? Let's just think about the other last digits here. Um, what what what's we're at it? So uh, we could have the last digit being uh, five, say, um, and again that could be prime because it could be the number five, or it could be not prime, like twenty-five, which is five squared. Uh, if we have three, nine, seven, and one, uh, these are all uh, potentially. Uh, non-prime certainly because uh, you know we can have powers of 3 like 243 uh, 81 27 and 9 that are all, that are all not prime um, but I could also find uh, just, or just prime numbers that end in all of these uh, numbers like you know 13 or um, uh, 11 here, 17, 19, that are all just, you know, prime number to the power of 1. So um, so we see that, in, again, in this case, we can get prime uh, or, or not prime. And the only last digit I haven't considered here is 0. So, uh, but actually, uh, we can't have 0 as a last uh, as a last uh, digit here, if it's just a number to a certain power, x and it ends in zero, it has to be ten to the power of something. Um, but ten is two times five, so it would have to have two prime factors. So actually, there are. Uh, so c is also true here. If pi of n is one, there are values of x n which are impossible. Um, now b, it says, are there some values of x n that mean n must be prime? 
uh, well actually no, uh, we had impossibility here and we had cases where it must be not prime and we had cases where it could be prime or not prime uh, but there was no, there's, you know, just if we know it's just got one prime factor whatever the last digit that you tell me is I'm never going to be able to just from that deduce that it's prime so actually B here uh, is false and we've solved the, solved the question you might like to consider the last two statements for completeness as well if pi of n plus x of n is 2 we can't tell if n is prime uh, we've sort of covered that here as well you know, we had, there's a one possibility here would be pi of n is 1 and x of n is also 1 uh, which is this case here um, and we can't so we, we can't tell if it's uh, if it's if it's if it's prime or, or, or not in that case um, and the other case we'd have to consider well we can't have uh, we're not going to have pi of n is 0 uh, that's not sensible here so pi of n is the other option is pi of n is 2 that would mean x of n would have to be 0 to make this equal to 2 so it's got last digit 0 again um, then uh, that would mean that it's uh, not prime but I guess uh, you know, just because of this case, I suppose this tells us that it's possible that it's prime or not. So just this alone uh, doesn't tell us whether it's prime or not. Um, you know, we'd have to know actually something more. You know, we'd have to know that this was two and this was zero. For that. Um, so just this on its own isn't enough. So that's true. And if pi of n equals two, all values of x n are possible. This is just saying if you've got two prime factors, then you can make um, you can make any last digit, which if you think about it is is fairly uh, fairly obviously true um, but we've already found the one that's false anyway okay so this was quite a long video uh, but you know uh, these are tough questions and uh, as I said before it probably takes me a little bit longer to to, to do them as we're talking through them uh, but you know it's uh, you have a fair amount of time for this paper two and a half hours uh, so you do have time to think about these problems uh, but of course you, you need to make sure you spend a good amount of time on the later questions as well so you know you spend a few minutes on each of these questions if you can't do them you leave them and, and come back to them. Okay, so um, I will try sometime soon to upload a video with uh, answers to some of the longer questions as well. Hopefully these are, uh, are useful and uh, good luck with the exam if you are sitting it soon.